Hello, this is Blake, and we're going to walk through creating a full body fuse avatar. So, first we will give it a name, and it's my name. So, uh, we'll choose an image of myself. And we have two different avatars. This is the full body fuse. This is a head only auto 3D avatar. We're making the fuse in this demo. Pick between male and female, and selecting the age actually selects a different facial feature finder and a different uh, facial reconstruction engine that is specifically tuned for uh, people who are pre-puberty. But uh, at this point, uh, I'm an adult, so uh, we'll move forward. Uh, here's instructions on the right-hand side that describes the best photo to use. And here's a brief video just describing this interface right here, but we're walking through the entire interface. So we'll just move forward. I have selected that I have legal right to use my own photo. Everything here at the avatar store is private. So uh, unless you make your avatars public or use them in a public venue, you can pretty much make an avatar of anybody you want. So at this point, it's just uploading the file and uh, probably the facial feature finder and uh, the initial photo analysis is taking place. And here it comes back. And here we have our the results of our initial facial feature find. And here is a guide on this side that explains with a lot more detail about where all these points should be located. Some of the key points you want to keep your eyes on is labeled jaw hinge and the one beneath jaw hinge. These two points right here are key to reconstruct a square jaw like what I have. So let's have a look at this. So here's where the neural nets initially identified my facial features and it did a pretty good job. We'll just move these points out a little bit. When moving the jawline points you pretty much want to move them horizontally only horizontally outward, and then for this point here, the one labeled jaw hinge in the guide, it should be slightly above where your jaw hinges, and the one beneath it should be just below where your jaw hinges. If you place your fingers on either side of your jaw and open and close, you can pretty much locate that position. So that's where they should be placed. This point I'm moving right here pretty much should be located just beneath the earlobe, but depending upon whether or not your uh, source photo is facing directly at the camera, that may impact whether or not this should be located there. Uh, so examining what I have, it's doing pretty good. I have unusually uh, large lips, so we'll make some adjustments to that. And also, my lips are not symmetrical. So we'll impress that into the system. And here I've got a very large lower lip, so we'll fix that. And in general, that looks pretty good. The nose points are fairly close, just need some slight adjustment. And let's look at the eyes. Okay, you'll notice the eyes, they often have the correct shape, but they're slightly shifted. That's probably due to perspective distortion. So I'll just slide this up. And then that really should be located like this. You want these points to pretty much outline where the iris and the eyelids would open and close. So there's that. There's that one there. That's pretty accurate. And then the forehead, I'll just take this up just slightly because I have a large forehead, or a high forehead, I should say. And now I just do a quick horizontal symmetry test because I am facing directly at the camera. These outer points should, the points outlining the face should be horizontally at the, it should be vertically at the same level 
that pretty much tells the neural nets that yes, the face is facing directly at the camera. Uh, there's multiple things taking place here. These annotation points are outlining the face, identifying the facial features, as well as their locations relative to each other also communicate to the neural nets whether or not the subject is facing directly at the camera. So in the case where here I'm facing directly at the camera, the facial feature points should be symmetrically located across the face. Okay, so this is a pretty accurate uh, representation here, so I will refine. Now what this is doing, this is sending the revised annotation points back to the neural nets and they're performing a 3D reconstruction. The 3D reconstruction itself only takes 0.6 seconds. And as we can see, here we have it completed and we should have a loaded 3D avatar in a moment. So there, not too bad. And we can see it correctly got the non-symmetric shape to my lip, correctly got the fat lower lip, my square jaw is not as square as it could be, but we'll correct that in the next interface. So in general, this is looking pretty good. So we'll take a quick little scan over here. This is looking fairly accurate. Okay, so that should be pulled up just a little bit to keep it horizontally equal. Just a little bit more. And this here, the neural net seems to think I'm not looking at the camera. That's probably because my lips are non-symmetrical. It probably also doesn't hurt just to do that. It won't really affect much. The real key with the lip points is you want these points, you want the mouth to be closed or the neural net will attempt to close the geometry, which can sometimes cause undesirable uh, mouth shapes. So I'm thinking that may correct the neural nets interpreting that my face is turned. But in general, this is looking pretty good. So I am going to accept this and move on to the 3D detailing interface. So now it's going back to the neural nets. It's taking these annotation points, doing another revision. And in a couple seconds, we should see the next interface drawn. Here we are. And this interface often takes a couple beats to draw. I'm working on trying to speed this up, but at the moment it takes a little bit longer than I would like. And what I've found for the moment is just forcing a refresh actually speeds the whole interface up. So here I just force a refresh and there we go. Much faster with a forced refresh. Okay, so first thing we want to do is examine the profile. Here's all of our profile uh, detail adjustments. And let's get the profile about like that. My forehead is a little bit higher. So we'll load that and you can see we can adjust the slope of the forehead quite easily. And uh, my brow does come out just slightly, a little bit more than what the neural nets did. And uh, the bridge of my nose is pretty accurate, just a slight adjustment to that little bump, and that's about correct. Now, my chin line isn't quite shaped like that, so I will pull in. Now notice how when I pull in on the chin, it actually kind of collapses the chin. And then when I pull the chin out, it goes horizontally outward. So it's a way of reshaping your, your chin line to some degree. And so now that was pretty much the adjustments that I needed to make my profile more accurate. And now I'm going to go into the details and I'm using, I'm staying on this interface, on this view, because I want to change this portion of my eyelids. As you can see from my source photo over here, 
my eyelids have started to, the skin over my eyelids has started to collapse as occurs with most people as they get older. And that's not represented here, so I can just simply go to the eyelid slider, touch it to load it, and there we can see how that's changing that shape there. If you're of Asian ethnicity, it will recognize that and it will give you a more Asian shape. If you're not Asian, it will simply add flesh that is similar to what you have uh, as a person ages. All right, and now let's see here. I'm a little bit older. Go back to the profile and let's put the bags under my eyes because I work too much. There we go. That kind of impresses that. You see this little line right there? That's what I'm changing as I move the tired eyes in and out. And then older tired eyes is just a little bit lower. You can kind of see that's moving that just a little bit lower. If I switch to a wireframe, you can probably see these changes a little bit even more obviously, what's actually moving. Let's go back to solid. And now, these other detail morphs. Uh, let's see here, my square jaw. Let's improve that a little bit. There we go. That's much more accurate, a square jaw. I do have a chin clef, so let's impress that. Now you kind of see the chin clef kind of coming and going. If you pitch the head forward, you can really see where the chin cleft is going. Mine is more subtle. That's about correct for me. And let's see over here. I do have slightly higher cheekbones. There, it pulls that out. And uh, most people have more smile lines than what the reconstruction gives you. So you can see, watch this edge right there. Right, you see the smile line going in? You can kind of see it here and here. Yeah, there's the smile. It's like a smile crease. All right. It's looking pretty accurate. And, okay, so we've got a couple other sliders, but uh, the temples look about correct. Maybe just slightly wider temples. Yeah, that's about correct. And now here, the distortion sliders are full skull modifications. And uh, depending upon the quality of your photo, as in was it taken with a mobile or a tablet camera, uh, it may need perspective distortion correction. So this slider right here, it performs a nonlinear perspective distortion. You see how that kind of shrinks the face? And you can see it also doesn't move the eyes. Uh, that's on purpose. So that's a little more perspectively correct. And if we want to, you can, you know, do fun things like exaggerate the shape of the skull, give yourself the giant mad scientist look. I kind of like that sometimes. So that was kind of like a mad scientist skull casing, if you wanted to do that. But let's go for realistic. All right, so now we've made these modifications to the perspective distortion which you can see the eyes are now out of alignment. So now we have the eye alignment interface. And left and right, it's the left of the avatar. So the left avatar is visually on the right. So we'll move that to be about the correct placement. Likewise, this should be located about there sideways, see how deep they are. That's about correct there. That's about correct there. Should be the same. And uh, typically I believe the eye should be just a little, the iris should be just a little bit higher than the way that they appear to default. 
So there we have the detail interface applied. And now I will save and bake. This is making uh, these changes permanent as far as you know what I'm going to be working with. And uh, in a moment, we'll get my baked avatar. Make the eyes follow the camera. And uh, my eye color is probably like this. So this will change our eye colors. Reloading. There we are. I think that looks like me quite a bit. Go to the avatar home, and now the character is ready for export. You can uh, change the eye colors again if you want. Exporting, modify the lighting, you know, perhaps you want to see how the avatar looks with slightly different illumination. Depending upon how your character was photographed, you may need to modify lighting in order to get a pleasing look. But this is just within the interface. So full lighting controls are available you know, in any other software that you may take the character. And then uh, you can undetail bake to change the, way, the 3D shaping if you want, modify the colors, and then exporting. And exporting is fairly easy. All you do is uh, purchase it, which we will be going into a lot more detail in the next tutorial.